Hi, everybody at PSGA. We are your instructional technology team. Um, with me today, I'm Marco Torres. With me today, we have um, Debbie Pingo, we have Valentin Guerra, and we have David Villarreal. We have a special guest with us today. This is Ryan McGinnis. Uh, he is with Wakelet. He's going to be showing us what, uh, what Wakelet is all about. Anything, if you're familiar with Wakelet, maybe a, a, a couple of things that have been new, but this is a, uh, our first part of a two-part series for the month of May. This first uh, this first session is going to be a little bit more of an introduction, in, in case you're not familiar with Wakelet. And then in two weeks from now, uh, Ryan's going to come back and he's going to show us a little bit more of an advanced tips and tricks uh, with Wakelet and get a little bit more in depth with that. Um, so with that being said, I just want to say, uh, Ryan, whenever you're ready, go ahead and take it away. Awesome. That sounds great. Uh, hopefully you can, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. But just making sure, cause that's so weird for Microsoft teams. Usually I can see what I'm sharing, but I'm on two screens. So, so thanks for having me. Uh, as we said, this is an introduction to Wakelet. Uh, so it'll be a little, uh, introductory, a uh, little bit of upper level as well to try to get the idea across of what you can do with Wakelet. And then of course that second session, really looking forward to bringing in that higher level aspects. So, uh, for anybody that's not familiar with Wakelet, it's like that one-stop shop. It's like reverse Pinterest, but for educators in the idea that you can take all of your materials and resources from anywhere across the web and put them into a nice little collections like this. So hopefully you're able to see all of those little tiles. These are separate little small collections and they can be collections based on a theme, a chapter, a module, a unit, whatever it is that you want to curate your materials into pop them into these collections. And then with one link, you have the opportunity to share those with a single person. So we know in education, I've been in education for 17 years as an elementary teacher, an elementary principal, a PD provider. We know that with every added click is an opportunity for your audience to get lost. We've all done that at the end of the day, we try to do a Kahoot. They're at Kahoot, they're at Kahoot. This kid had no idea what we were trying to get them to. And that quick little chance to have uh, an activity has gone away. So now I can use Wakelet to curate all of my materials inside of a single location and then share those out. So no more link after link after link. So I can copy and paste any web address into a Wakelet collection. I can just click and paste it in and it's going to go ahead and do all of that Wakelet magic. If I do it right now, www.espn.com. It's going to take that, it's going to pull the metadata from the website, pull a cover, a title, and a description, and pop that right in there. And this is a live link for other people to click on. If I don't like the way that it does look, I can always customize this. So I can click the edit button, and I can change the cover image, I can change the title, I can change the description. Um, so if I'm working with younger students, maybe this becomes a giant number one, start here, do this. If I'm working with upper level students, maybe I just leave it the way that it is. So all websites and stuff can be pulled in. Uh, anything web-based, uh, Nearpod lessons, activities uh, can all be brought in. We also have a text editor, so you can type in text into your content. You have bullets, highlights, italics, all those things that you need. And anywhere you type text, it can be read out loud to your intended audience. So they can always access Microsoft's great immersive reader feature. This will read it out loud to them, of course, with a male or female voice. They can speed it up, they can slow it down, and they can translate in over 67 different languages. So getting your content across to the students makes it a lot easier as well. You can also add images. So you can upload your pictures and images that you wanna put in here. Uh, you'll have that ability to upload an image. You can also design in Canva. Uh, Giphy and Unsplash are available for students 13 and over. And for you eagle-eyed people who are already Wakelet users, you're starting to see a new button that will show up in a couple weeks um, that we have AI image generation built into our platform as well. That's a pre-release sneak preview, so keep it on the hush-hush. Uh, but that will be uh, limited to anybody on the free version. It will be unlocked uh, and unlimited for people on our Education Pro version. We also have the uh, video record and video upload that is also only available on our Education Education Pro. This is really great for if you want your students to showcase their understanding of a concept. Maybe they upload an essay, but they do a video reflection to talk about why and how 
or if they're doing it for a science journal, they can actually record with an iPad or their cell phone them doing the steps of a scientific experiment. Or you think of your CTLE um, classes who are trying to showcase, you know, I'm going to school to be a welder. Maybe I can show a video showing me doing a weld to showcase just how good I am at a concept or a skill. So of course you can upload video, record video. Those are again, only on the Education Pro version. Uh, you have PDF, so you can upload your PDFs. We will host those for you. Uh, so you can pass out those PDFs to your students if you still want them to look at those materials. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of integrations and you'll notice new ones in a couple of weeks during community week that aren't part of this now, uh, but Microsoft Flip is in here. You can directly search videos in YouTube. Uh, Google Drive and OneDrive and Adobe Express. But again, just because you don't see it here doesn't mean you can't put them in there. Some of our best integrations, Book Creator, if your students are making Book Creator books, get the share link, pop it in here, and you can flip through the pages just like you would inside of anything else. So it's really great and easy. But the idea of Wakelet is to get away from this, where we've done these hyperdocs before, we all did this, uh, but we know those blue links aren't easy for students to look at. They're not easy for them to understand. Also for me, I've spent 17 years, again, in education. I can never get my image, but I'm trying to pop it onto a hyperdoc to be in the right spot with text wrapping. It never works for me, but we take those same materials for the life cycle of a frog. You pop those into a Wakelet collection and instantly your links are clickable. They look really nice. Your image can be resized without having to leave anything. So it's really good um, there as well. And then again, YouTube videos, no ads, no distractors. It's embedded right into the site, which means your students can just be engaged in the content with no uh, nothing you know, taking away their distractions. So here, life's um, Again, no ads, no Fortnite, no nothing's popping up on the side to keep your students distracted. We've got tons of use cases in here for you to look at. So I will share this collection into the chat for you to go ahead and take a look at because it tells you, you know, we work with so many tools. You can put a Kahoot quiz in here, put a couple resources and videos. You can make it like a choice board for your students based on, again, topic, theme, module, or unit. Uh, science fair projects. This is an example. This is Neil's science fair project. Uh, instead of doing a trifold board, a trifold board is $4 a student, right? Trying to go out there and buy a trifold board. It's good for one project. Uh, then what do you do with the trifold boards when you're done? They either get sent home or they go straight to the, to the dumpster. Um, so in this case, uh, what we have is that's the same cost as a Wakelet Education Pro license for a student. So for that $4, they can keep reusing their license. They can do it for multiple different projects. In this case, the student wanted to document their learning journey on a procrastination machine. What's cool is that he's using Instagram to document his learning. Uh, many students don't do that, but you can see Instagram flips and looks like Instagram. Book creator looks like book creator. If you put a Kahoot quiz in here, it's going to look like a Kahoot quiz. Everything works just the way that we want it to be intended. Text again is in there. So if they wanted to have that read out loud or uh, translated, super quick, super easy and your videos are inside. We have all of these things at the end uh, for you to look at. One district is using us as a way of starting and, and handling their lost and found. So instead of having that crusty box at the end of a hallway, what they did is they took all of their lost and found materials. The front office staff just takes pictures of them. This whole collection takes the copy link and is shared directly on their district webpage. And then check it out. They call the phone number and you can just tell them what item is left behind. Novel idea. It's not a mind blowing use case, but a time saver, quick and easy. You could call and say, hey, my daughter left uh, item 283. Can you send that home with Kennedy? And boom, it's home the next day. Now, my daughter, she's eight. She'd probably shop on here. But it's another great use case just to show all the ability to move your materials in. We also got the ability to do student portfolios um, and student portfolios are with that education pro plan. Your students have accounts. And what's really cool is we know that power of learning by doing or when they have that emotional attachment to uh, an, an activity, it makes it more meaningful, right? If you just give them a worksheet, there's a time and place for compliance. 
but we want them to be empowered to choose to do this work on their own. So this collection is near and dear to me. This is my daughter, and she was doing her research project on her leadership traits uh, for the Leader in Me school that she attends. And instead of doing a trifold board, she tied everything together neatly into a Wakelet collection. So she was able to use Microsoft Flip to write her speech instead of typing her text and printing it off and gluing it to the trifold board. You know, you can watch that here. I'll share that with you if you want to see my daughter's collection a little bit more up close. But then she went through and put pictures, images, uh, different text elements just to showcase her leadership traits. What's cool is with our portfolios, they follow the students year after year through Clever ClassLink so that they get the ability to build upon their best work, right? It takes the, the idea of Sam R and TPAC, of matching the tech tool with the appropriate output, uh, and they're, they're able to create these really great use cases. Um, this is one we've showed off for many years now, is Anora, University of North Texas, being able to see and put their, her best work as a bunch of little collections out here. So if you wanted to see Anora's achievements, She's got a collection full of them, pictures, images, videos, webinars, all in a single location. When it comes time to share for her college application, you can copy the link and send it out. We've got more examples we can show you. One of my other favorite ones is this idea of a newsletter. Uh, what's really cool about Wakelet 2 is you can make a copy of these. So if you want this newsletter version, I'll send that out to everybody. If you thought about doing your newsletter here, think about all the times you get a newsletter and it's static on paper and you realize you made a typo or something else. Now you can quickly type your greeting, give them some important dates. If you have a uh, field trip coming up and they need the permission slip, put the PDF in here. Parents can always click on it and download it later on. Viewers don't need accounts to view other collections. You can show in what they're learning. Uh, from the digital app, from the mobile app, you can upload 15 photos at a time. So if you sign in with the same account on your phone as you do on your computer, you'll be able to upload 15 photos all at once and then 15 more and 15 more. So it's great for showcasing what's going on in the classroom. Some other really nice new things uh, coming up. We, we have the ability to bookmark and save anything from across the web into a single location. Uh, this is brand new. Again, you're getting a sneak preview of what's coming out in a couple of weeks. I can now search all of my items. So searchable items uh, that will be out for everybody. You'll be able to search all of your cards. It'll tell you where the cards are. It'll tell you which collection they belong to. For the Education Pro version, you're gonna get an enhanced filter, which will allow you to search for keywords or different types of cards. So if you know you have a really uh, amazing video you wanna share or some images or PDFs, you can quickly find those. And then this is using AI tagging in that background there to help us understand the keywords and searches. For those of you who are new to the Wakelet platform, we also have the Explore page. And this allows you to find materials and resources to bring into your classroom right away. So if you're not sure about how to get started with Wakelet, check out the Explore page. Pick one of the categories that go along with it see if there's something in there for you. We have some templates. We do have courses for students. So there's some portfolio courses. There's a student ambassador course. There's also pre-made lesson plans. These are created by educators. They're made by our certified trainers. So these are vetted materials and resources. They have to be approved by us to even show up in here. But if you wanted to do something for like Mental Health Awareness Month, you could take this collection that's in here, you could make a copy of it on your own, put it into your collection area, and then you have the ability to share that out with your intended audience. So you can quickly go in and use that Explore page to find different things. So if you're interested in science, you can start to find different materials inside of that page. Again, there's that portfolio course. So if you are looking at doing portfolios with your students, this is a free course. It is working on the idea of building a portfolio from the very first time from scratch. Uses a mixture of paper and technology. So paper for the planning, bringing it into the technology aspect with Wakelet. And then it's cyclical, like any good portfolio should be. Once they get to module five, 
they reflect on their portfolio, what could be changed, what could be better, and they go back to the very beginning to try and learn something new and something more. For those of you following along, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat while we're going through because this is a Q&A and I'd love to be able to uh, answer some of your questions. What we can do uh, and walk you through this is build our very first collection just to show you how easy this is. When I'm on this home screen, I can just click create a collection. It's going to take me to my blank template. From here, I can choose to give it a title. Call it something. I can give it a cool, awesome sub description. I can say Thursday, May 2nd. I can go straight to the design tab. That's what I do. I go title, sub, uh, subtitle, and then I go straight to the cover image where I can jump in here and I can upload an image. I can generate, I can design with Canva, choose from Giphy or Unsplash. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and pick, um, pick that image. It looks great. I can choose a background image. So again, I can just choose something from Unsplash. Doesn't have to go with it. And then down below, you get different layouts for your content. So what you saw in most of my collections is that media view, that top down playlist of materials where students start at the top and work their way down. We also have compact, which will shrink all of your tiles down into smaller tiles. It would look something like this. So if I change the design here, the compact view, everything shrinks super small. I can change it to grid view and it's going to go two by two columns. So I have that ability to shrink and make my items bigger. I could go mood board, which is that Pinterest style layout where everything just spreads out um, and I can drag and drop and rearrange. Or I can choose to go column view and I can choose to enter columns and sort my collection and my materials back out. What I love about Wakelet though, is even as I'm switching different layouts, it knows which one I built my collection in first, and it kept all of my materials in that same item. So if I'm shuffling it around, trying a couple of different things out, it always reverts back to how I had it set up at first. So inside of that collection that I'm starting to build, I can just do mood board instead, and maybe I want to start adding things in here. So I'll go ahead and do generate an image. And let's do uh, a unicorn riding a rainbow in Candyland. Super cool is I can come up with these images right away. And I can add that right into my card. Of course, if I have websites that are out there, uh, I can even take other wakelets and pop them in with their share address. So you can create that nested feeling of maybe you've got a giant unit plan and you want to put chapter one as a separate collection inside chapter two as a separate collection. And then students can just go through when they need them. Uh, you can add images. So again, you can bring those in. I'll bring a PDF in. Don't know if I have anything grand, but some downloads. Some usage from a different school district that'll go over. We'll put Omaha public schools usage in there. It'll just say PDF. Uh, but then, of course, I can go in and edit this so I can make it look a little bit fancier. Omaha school is usage. Here I can change this image to uh, say a graph. And now instead of it just saying this ugly PDF image, it's going to look a little bit nicer. I can change these around. I can rearrange, drag and drop however I want them to go through. But it's really nice to have just different options for different materials. Uh, try to think what else we can share. Any questions so far? I Do don't see any questions uh, so far. Ryan. Okay. All right, we got Brittany's typing. See, we got, oh, okay, not yet. All right. What's really cool is the great use cases of this is just the ability of how flexible the platform is, right? It could be used not just for your materials and sharing things out. Uh, in my previous life, as like I said, a PD provider, it was a really easy way for me to say when I was teaching coding to other teachers, and maybe they weren't familiar with 
the platform. So teaching Fortnite coding is not an easy task. Uh, everybody's starting at a different base level, like many of our subject areas. So I created this collection, Column View, where they could, you know, if they're new to Fortnite, they could come in here and they could see, like, how do I play the game? What do I need to do? How do I get that established? And then over here are the five different activities that were available at that time. So each activity is a different coding platform, coding uh, thing. This here is making a escape trivia game. This one is an obstacle course. This one's music with pressure plates. But what I did is I took the lesson plan, the website, the student guide, teacher guide, PDFs, and the video from YouTube so that, you know, if people wanted to try it just based off of the guidebooks, they have the PDFs in there, they could do it. If they were more of a visual coder, they could play the video and like pause and do the coding and go back. Uh, so it's multimodal uh, for all of those aspects. So I'm really trying to meet my audience, which we know we can't do, but try to meet them where they are in the mode of learning that they like the best. So this is just one example. Uh, I can share that out with you as well, just to see if anybody's interested. But you can make these boards on anything. I make ones for all of my school visits. Uh, this collection I wanted to share with everybody uh, is, where is it? It was back in collections. It was getting started with Wakelet. In that getting started with Wakelet collection, if you scroll all the way to the end, I made this collection that's inside of there that shows you I'm trying to grab the best of the best. So across Twitter or X, whatever you call it now, trying to find the best actual uses of people who are using Wakelet and tweeting out and sharing about it so that you can see just how other people uh, are using it, not just what I'm saying other people are using it. So these are people out there tagging Wakelet, showing what they're doing. This is a gifted and talented classroom seventh grade debate and discourse, and they're doing it through the Wakelet platform. Uh, here's some, uh, this is a school district in New York State where they're doing all of their projects and putting them all together to share out. So they do the paper-based projects, then they take the pictures and do their research, and they do that inside of Wakelet. Super cool. Uh, and then the last collection is, we often hear this every time I go to a major conference, um, It's uh, that's a cool tool, but it doesn't fit what I'm trying to teach. So for everybody who may think that, this collection has examples from a bunch of different subject areas. So if you teach arts, theaters, and drama, there's resources for you in this collection. If you're an ELA teacher, there's materials in there for you. Math teacher, we get that all the time. I love it, but it doesn't fit the math curriculum. Check it out, because there's some really cool resources. One teacher was teaching the Pythagorean theorem, and he knows his students can do it on paper, but then their final project was to make a Canva design and get all creative with it, make a story problem and make the image tell the story problem with a Canva design. So you had kids making Canva designs that had, you know, I'm an alien and a UFO, I'm chasing somebody who's got a five foot head start on me. I am 180 feet off of the ground. What is, you know, the angle that's missing there, that length that's missing. They were being able to teach that math concept while the students were able to get creative with different use cases. And I think that one's in there library media, CTE. So there's a bunch of different resources in here, especially PD instructional coaches uh, and my fellow admins. I made sure that there's one in there for them as well. So check those out. And lastly, this epic Wakelet examples collection. This is probably one of the biggest collections I've ever seen, over 291 items. Uh, probably my favorite one because it breaks it down. If you're interested in portfolios, here's a whole bunch you can look at. If you're interested in research projects and what that looks like in Wakelet, here's a whole bunch. All the way to you know PD, newsletters, conferences. You want to talk grade level specifics? We got it broken down by that too. So everything from pre-K all the way to college and uni level, you'll see examples based uh, and shared with us from other users as it slowly loads. It's a lot of content in here, college and unis. And then we even have people to follow. So if you're talking ELA, who's some people that might have some content that you can follow and look at uh, and different collection topics. So it's a great equalizer. It's a great way of getting all of your content out there. Uh, we do have, like I said, that free version is available for you. Wakelet.com, get started, sign up, create your collections. Um, you can create unlimited collections on the free version. 
the collaboration, you can have people contribute to your collection up to three times. So three collections can be uh, contributed to. Uh, and then we do offer that education pro version, which is a step above that gets your student accounts uh, through clever class link rostering, gives you access to those new features and features that are only headed in that direction. Uh, but we've got a Wakelet platform that fits everybody. I'm also going to put my email in the chat. If you get stuck, Ryan at Wakelet.com, feel free. I'm also on Twitter or X because I don't know which one to ever call it anymore. But I will put that in there as well because it's going to. It's going to try to tag me as a person. So I'll separate it out. There we go. At Ryan McGee Tech. You can find me on Twitter or X. Feel free to email me if you need help or any questions. Uh, we're happy to help you get started, showcase anything. Um, but that Getting Started collection's got a lot more material in it than what I wanted to cover. So I hope you found it interesting. Thanks for your time uh, on an afternoon, evening. Uh, yes, that collection you have right now is available for us. I will also share it one more time just to make sure. This is the Getting Started collection. That pretty much had everything. It looked amazing. <laughs> yeah, I like to keep a lot of things in there because it's you can talk for everything or you can just highlight it and then let them go back and find it later on. So I gave you as much as I could in there to walk you through. <laughs>